Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I just went to the mailbox and my first full set of watercolor tubes came in the mail today. And I'm very excited about getting these. These are not professional grade. These are artist grade paints. They are a Korean company. They're called Sheehan Professional Watercolor watercolors. Uh, and there are 30 colors. It had a cellophane wrap, but I took it off. Inside the lid, it gives you all of the numbers and the colors for the paint. And here are what all the tubes look like. Now, I have never bought myself a full set of any kind of watercolors, but this was affordable for me. And since I'm a beginner, I thought that this was this was okay place to start. Um, so, since my niece gifted me a pan that was on my art supply list on Amazon that has 48, it has 48 pans in it, I'm going to fill up the top portion and maybe a few others in here uh, with the Sheehan paint and let them dry for three or four days and then start using them. They had colors that I really liked and I did watch a YouTube video showing um, showing how the person used them and she swatched them and she mixed colors together and she said she didn't think they were bad paints for um, for beginner paints that they make more expensive sets but this is a good place to start so I thought I would do this as much as I would like to afford Daniel Smith, let's face it, <laughs> it's, uh, that is not in my budget currently. So I thought I would start with these and see how these go and see what happens. I have been painting every day. Well, almost every day. I didn't paint for a couple of days over the Christmas holiday, but I have been painting. And when I went to Michael's Hobby Lobby and... Where else they go? Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and oh, what's the third place? Pooh! I went to three craft stores this weekend, uh, or uh, Friday, and I bought myself some new brushes. I was watching a video by Ellen Crimmy Trent, and she gave a list of, I think it was eight or nine of her top brushes that she likes. So I went to Hobby Lobby... Michael's and Joann's, that's it, <laughs> Joann's on Friday, and while I was out, I decided to look for some brushes. I got a coupon use out of them and got myself some nicer brushes, and these will be strictly dedicated to watercolor. Acrylic will never touch them. So I'm going to do some painting later today. I'm going to practice with these brushes and see what I can do with them, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I have a little confession to make. These watercolors, I think, eh, are what I'm going to use for um, my creative year this year because this year is all about color. So I want to try to use these to experiment with color. I figured while I'm trying to learn how to watercolor, this might be my method to uh, play with colors. So I'm going to squeeze these out. I will fast forward through this because, believe me, it's not that stinking exciting. And then I will swatch them. And you can watch that. Mm -hmm, uh, I don't know if it'll be a fast forward or not. Let me go ahead and squeeze some of this stuff out because it's going to take a couple days for it to get solid in the pans. Okay, so let me take this away. Whoops, something else underneath the it. Okay, so I got these put in the uh, pans, and I did them exactly the way, the way they are here to begin with. And I'm going to swatch them, but I have a feeling they're not going to stay this way because I can already see that I would prefer to have my cool and warm separated. 
um, because I use cool colors more than I use warm colors most of the time. So I want those to be front and center. But since I'm a beginner, I'm going to go with what the manufacturer has put on the inside lid. And I did dip my fingers in there, try to pry them out and put them in there because I miscounted and got five on this row and then had to move everything to get the very first one up here. Blah. All right, so I'm going to swatch. Let me go get some paper and cut it down to size and then I will swatch and talk. I have one of my new brushes, which is a Master's Touch number eight round. Um, I tried to find some brushes that I'd heard Ellen Crimmy Trent um, talk about her eight or nine favorite brushes, and I don't have a lot of good watercolor brushes, so I went to Hobby Lobby and got these. They were on sale for 50% off, so I figured, oh, what the hey. You know, uh, maybe it'll teach me the difference between an average brush, uh, a student-grade brush, and, you know, more professional or expensive brushes. All right, so ooh, it's got brown on it. I've never even used it. Um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I did use this. I forgot. I used it for a flower yesterday, so it's got residue on it. Let me get all this stuff off of here. Ick. I forgot I did use this. Okay, so um, I have my card. I divided it up. I have 48 pans here, 12 on the top, 12 on the bottom, and there are 30 colors. So I wrote the color numbers and the names in each one of these probably not going to be a very big um, swatch but it'll give me an idea of what the color looks like now let me show you they sat overnight I squeezed a lot in these pans and film completely up I squeezed a good amount in there and they sat overnight that little bit of orange came off on that one I tested some of the others this morning they've got they feel kinda like they've got liquid stuff underneath them like they're still moist underneath but the top has kind of a, a film on it already and um, they're getting dry I think it's going to take a couple more days and after I paint do the samples with them it'll be even longer but I can't stand it I want to use them so bad so we're gonna do this anyway all right so let me see the first one is Prussian blue I don't think I need a lot. And I'm not going to do like everybody de else does all the fancy schmancy way of doing it. I just want to see what they... Oh, look at that. Mmm, that's lovely. I like that shade of blue. Very nice. And I'm not a huge fan of blue and pink. But, you know, there's always a place for stuff like that when you paint. Alright, so this one is Ultramarine Blue, I think. not bad and from since I'm a beginner I'm gonna tell you all my beginner knowledge that I've gleaned from watching other people's videos is that anything that says the word hue on it means it's a mixture it's not a pure pigment it has pigments mixed together from what I can understand listening to what other people say so I learned that and I learned the word fugitive which means they are not light fast means that they will fade with 
light and time. For me, it's not a big deal because most of my watercolors will be in... Um... Oh, lovely. Except for, you know, you look at this one and this one, all I would have to do is add just a tiny bit of white to this and water it down, and then you would have this one. This one says hue, I think. Oh, wait, does that say light or hue? Oh, it says hue. So it is a mixture of, I'm assuming, this and something else because they look very close together. So if I was going to replace a color, this one would not be it because I'd rather have the pure pigment and then mix, you know, pure color and then mix, learn to mix my colors. This one is peacock green, which again, I don't know. That doesn't look like something I would replace, although it doesn't say hue on it. Okay, next one is olive green. This will get a little wetter. Oh, I love that shade of green. Plus, I like olives. <laughs> All right, and I think this one is, whoops, sap green, which I really like. Now, sap green for Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith sap green and this sap green. This is a much lighter sap green. The one that Daniel Smith paint is sap green is much more green dark undertones. What is this one? I can't even pronounce this. Viridian? Viridian. Viridian hue. Alright, again, that's a mixture. I'd rather have the pigments that, you know, are one pigment instead of a mixture. This is emerald green. I think maybe I watered that down a little. Well, Emerald green and viridian kind of look the same to me. I don't know. All right, this one is yellow green, which I also love this color because I, I like florals. And so this is an excellent green for florals. Lemon yellow. Not bad. This one is permanent yellow light. Eventually, I'm sure I will rearrange these, but the, I'm doing it the way the box had the stuff listed in the box. This one is permanent yellow deep. Oh, nice. All right, what do we got here? Shoot. Juin, Jun, Brilliant. Uh, uh, this looks to me like it's a flesh tone. Oh. Eh, I don't do faces and flesh, so me. Eh. Yellow Ochre, again, one that I really like because I do a lot of florals. I like florals. When I'm looking for things to watercolor, I do like to do flowers. I have a feeling scenery and flowers is going to be my thing, but you know, you always need other colors to fill in for the things where you're not doing a scenery or it's not a floral. All right, what's this one? Orange. Oh, yeah, that is. <laughs> That's very orange. Vermilion hue. All right, this is a mixture. Wow, that's dark. Woo. Okay. Then we have red. Now, I like a good true red. We'll see how this does. Looks more on the pink side to me. What's this one? I can't read what it is. Number 430. Oh, it's opera. Pew. I think this one is more on the pink side, if I remember correctly. Opera's more a pink. Yep, there it is. Violet. One of my favorite colors. Love that color. Then there is Crimson. I can't even read my own handwriting. Lake. I'm not sure if that says lake.
Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, and this one is Bordeaux, like the wine, the region of France, red violet, Um, I'm going to not swatch the white. Let me start from this side. This one is raw umber. Now, I may not be getting the deepness because I don't, I'm trying not to disturb what's going on here with drying out. Probably after doing this, it'll take a couple more days for the tops to get more solid. This is red ochre. Oh, that's a lovely color. I also love earth tones. I, these colors seem very vibrant to me. Van Dyke Brown. This seems more like an earthy tone brown, a very deep, deep brown, whereas this one doesn't seem as deep. All right, then we have something brown red. Oh, and that one's hardly... That one's very liquidy still in the pan. Oh, this has red in it. You can really tell. You can tell the difference between this one and this one. All right, now we're back to black and white. Let me do the white first. Oh, oh it's like fluff. And I got some brown in it. It's okay, though. I really don't care because it's white. I mean, you know, it's not a shade of white. They just say white. And this is... This is black. Here we go. All right, so there are the swatches for the Shinhan, what's this called? I want to make sure I get the name right. Shinhan Professional, Shinhan Professional Watercolor. And they come, it's, it's, a, it's a nice box. There are 30 colors, and they're in there nicely. And on the inside of the lid, It's got it backwards, but anyway, um, here are all the colors listed right here. And just a reminder, these are Korean watercolors from Korea. And you will see there is Korean writing there. Korean writing is a little more distinct than some of the others, but that's Korean writing. And I'm going to paint with these for... Um, my creative year because this year it's all about color so I thought well these would be a nice start and I'm going to paint with these so I get used to them and see how I like them and then if I I um, decide to move on to another kind of uh, watercolor I will swatch it if it hasn't already been swatched and I will tell you when I'm painting that I'm using a different brand. I have a feeling that this um, this pan set here will have other brand names in there, but the first brand is the Shehan and or Shinhan, and then this will be filled up with whatever. Cause I I got this as a gift from my niece for Christmas, so I want to use it. All right, so that's it for the moment. I'm going to leave these open and I'm going to let them dry for a couple more days till they get really rock hard solid, if they do at all. Some of them might not ever completely dry, but, you know, we gave it a try. I really, I really like the colors. I like the, I love the greens. Um, not really crazy about the red because to me it doesn't feel like true red. Opera's a pink. Then they have these variations. Uh, there's a couple of them on here that say hue. Okay, so I did delete the last part of the last segment of the video where I talked about hue and one pigment colors because I got it wrong. And I want to make sure that I correct my mistake before somebody goes, Oh my God, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's why I have to look it up and be sure. So what I did was... I went through all the color, uh, all the tubes, and I had to use a magnifying glass because I can't see this print. So I went through and looked at each one of the tubes, and every one of these in here is a single pigment. 
all right and on the tubes on the back of the tubes it says the pigment number PG7 uh, PY1 so those are all single pigments these on the other hand are more than one pigment and they stay on they say on the back PV3 and P, I think that says PR81. So all these are multiple pigments. I think most of them are two pigments. So I want to make sure that I correct what I said in the video, that it took more than one pigment to make these. These are singles. So let me count how many. Now there are 30 in the set. So let me, let me count these. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, so that's a little over half of the set are more than one pigment, pigment to make the color. These are the single pigments where it just took one. I know some people rather ha have, <coughs> excuse me, have single pigment colors. At this point, I, I can't be picky because I can, I'm not sure if I can afford to replace all these to make some of these single, single pigments. All right, so let me clarify something else that I said. I looked up on, I think this is, is this dictionary.com? But I did different definition of hue, which I evidently misunderstood that too. A shade, a color or shade. Synonyms. Color. Tone, shade, tent, tinge, cast, and tincture. The attribute of a color by virtue of which it is discernible as red, green, etc., and which is dependent on its dominant wavelength and, and independent of intensity or lightness. So I misunderstood the definition of hue. Let's see. Let me click on this. What is the definition of hue? All right. What is the definition between color and hue? Maybe this is easier. Color is the general term we use to describe every hue, tint, tone, shade we see. White, black, and gray are often referred to as a color. The hue refers to the dominant color color family of a specific color we're looking at. White, black, gray are never referred to as hue. Well, that it was clear as mud. <laughs> okay, so anyway, hue evidently were well, the ones that I said that ha are a hue color. Um, it has to do with the variation of the original color. Uh, let's see, what's well, cerulean blue? Cerulean blue is, where is it on here? Cerulean blue, the pigment, PB15. And then there was, an, there was another one in here that I said, well, you know, why would I buy, replace that other color if I'm, I've already got the original. Why would I buy a hue? So let me see if I can find the two that said hue. Ultramarine, no, that's not a hue. What's this one? Prussian blue hue. So this one is PB15, and it says semicolon 3. So I guess that is a degree, sort of like of, like there's dark blue, medium blue, light blue, so you have the original blue, and then you have the hues of the blue, if I understand this correctly. If I'm wrong, please leave me that information down below in, in, in your comments, because I want to get this straight. I don't want to tell somebody the wrong stuff. Anyway, so I, I am enjoying these colors and learning about them. Um, and also that my eyes have really <laughs> taken a turn that I'm having to use a magnifying glass to read these. Every uh, It's in English, Spanish, French, and Korean on every one of these. And also I noticed on the tube it says light fastness. I think they said light fastness for the Korean paints. They use a one through three scale. 
and I'm not sure if two is good or two is bad. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'm looking at them. Most of them have a, a two, as best I can tell. I'm looking at these, and it most of these have a two. Let me see what these are. This one's a three, so I don't know if that's good or bad. That's a two. That's a three. So I, I'm wondering if three is good and one is bad, or one is good and three is bad. I, I'm not really sure. I'll have to look it up because these are Korean, so I'm not really sure. Anyway, so that's it for my mm, beginner knowledge of things. <laughs> I just want to make sure I came back and correct what I said because I, I really don't want to put out information that's bad because y'all know a whole lot more than I do. All right, I will see you guys in another video. Hopefully, I will not insert foot into my mouth. Bad taste. Bye-bye. <laughs>